The Universe of Sound Data Sonification Project, it's all about taking NASA data, NASA images, and translating them into something that you can hear. This is done through a mathematical mapping, where we're taking the pixels and just translating them into different kinds of sound beds. My name is Dr. Kimberly Arcand, and I'm a visualization scientist for NASA's Chandrax Observatory at the Center for Astrophysics. I'm Sophie Kastner, and I'm a composer, and I wrote the piece Where Parallel Lines Converge. My piece centers around the idea of spiraling. I'm always kind of looking for new things that we can try, new ways to understand things, new ways to process information. The initial plan was to take the original sonifications and translate them as accurately as possible into pieces to be played by musicians. When Sophie came into this project as a professional composer, she really brought a unique perspective. To me, it just seemed like this brilliant idea of converting data to sound, not only for visually impaired people who then can appreciate these images that they can't necessarily see, but also as a supplemental tool for someone who's looking at the image who can then hear it. It was different once I started thinking about it from a composer's point of view. All of these objects seem so unknowable. So it's incredible to me that we have these opportunities to bring those objects down to earth to help make them knowable. It is this idea of capturing light that's been traveling to us, translating scientific information into something we can perceive, something we can understand, something we can learn from. The title, Where Parallel Lines Converge, came from a poem that I read by Sarah Howe. It predicts black holes where parallel lines will meet whose stark horizon, even starlight, bent in its tracks, can't resist. It's been such a pleasure to work with Sophie as she works through this idea of translating a translation into something that can be played. Paying attention to the NASA data, being authentic to the scientific story, but bringing it down into the sphere of human playable sounds. What she very smartly and adeptly did was focus on moments in the data that would make it a bit more bite-sized for an ensemble to play. The significant sections of the image where there's a real cool story to tell and a cool sound bed to make from that story. I was working with an ensemble of about seven musicians. I can't necessarily do this in the same way. Taking the data and incorporating computer software, okay, let me use the similar process to what the original sonifications did, but add my own spin to it because I also wanted to make it a piece of music suited to the instruments I was working with. To me, that's just a wonderful melding of science and art. The concept of using data and then translating it directly to sound was a really interesting idea to me. There's this huge emotional layer to looking at these images of space. Oh my god, I'm so small in comparison to this vast object. It's such a large feeling to have. I wanted to dig into those emotions. When you're talking about things like gamma ray bursts, blazars, quasars, black holes, like all of these things sound too incredible to really understand, to have a personal connection to, but sound or music, you can. You can have a personal connection. The Galactic Center, this sort of inner 400 light year region around Sagittarius A star, our very own supermassive black hole. It's this wonderful, dense, busy, active downtown region of the Milky Way. There's exploding stars, there are these X-ray binaries, there are these beautiful loops of material, all these massive stars, there's so much going on. The infrared data is mapped to a soft piano. The Hubble data is mapped to a plucky violin. And then the Chandra data is mapped to this sort of glockenspiel xylophone sound. Each of those sounds are very distinct. So as you scan, you sort of hear that soft, cooler gas and dust from Spitzer and that beautiful piano. But then Hubble's violin comes in, and you can very clearly hear those very plucky moments of these gorgeous extended arches. And then as you get over toward Sagittarius A star, that monster of a black hole, you hear this little crescendo of high energy from Chandra. 
humans and computers are different, obviously, and, and humans have limitations in terms of what they can play, what they can read. The music has to be legible to musicians. I didn't have the tools of like an entire orchestra of strings. You know, I have two string instruments and I think the two string instruments I have, they can make so many different types of beautiful sounds that are more than just a pizzicato. Extra light would correspond with a very pure high pitched tone. I kind of worked in that way where I categorized sounds that I had available to me. I corresponded them with parameters directly from the NASA data and directly from the original sonifications. I picked specifically the flute because it can play so high, but also because it has so many different textures and timbres that it can make. I decided to use the clarinet because I can also have that instrument doubling bass clarinet, which gives me this huge registral range. I really wanted to have percussion instruments because there are so many different kinds of sounds you can make with percussion instruments, especially the, the mallet instruments like the glockenspiel and the crotalis and the marimba, where, you know, it has a huge range, but it also has these really high, beautiful, like pingy, pure tones. And they're very celestial in sound. And the original sonifications also use a lot of glockenspiel. So I wanted to kind of harken back to that a little bit and use the glockenspiel and the crotalis, which have these really beautiful pure tones to connote this celestial sound. You really hear this at the end of the piece. I have this whole section where it's zooming in towards the Sagittarius A star and you hear all of these repetitive, pingy, high textural sounds in the glockenspiel and the crotalis and the piano. And I really just wanted to convey this sense of vastness and also of just how many stars there are. They're all overlapping on each other and you can't even count them anymore. I don't think of these pixels, these photons, in the same way anymore. I learned so much about space that I didn't know at all. What else can we do to make this processing of our data more interesting, more fun, more experiential? I'm all for new ways of knowing. <laughs>